James Allen Prost, and I'm going to discuss with you pressure release ventilation, airway pressure release ventilation, APRV. This is an unusual mode, and I'm not sure exactly, but it seems to fit under the mode of pressure control IMV, airway pressure release ventilation. This is a very radical mode of ventilation. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to create two levels of pressure control. We have the expiratory pressure and we have the inspiratory pressure, IPAP and EPAP. The ventilator is simply going to cycle between those two pressures, regardless of patient inspiratory or expiratory effort. The patient can breathe at any time, either at during the higher pressures, the inspiratory pressure, or the EPAP pressure, the expiratory pressure. The patient can breathe at any time during that. The purpose of this mode of ventilation is a lung protective strategy. We're also given very precise control over the mean airway pressure created in the lungs, and that's useful to help control oxygenation of our patient. This is often used on patients with severe lung disease and very, very low compliance. The amount of pressure that's delivered, just like with all modes of pressure control, determines the size of the breath amount of tidal volume. That difference between the IPAP and the EPAP determines the amount of volume that will be delivered with each breath. The unusual element of this mode is that often we have much longer I times. So the inspiratory pressure is held for a much longer period of time than the exhalation pressures. Inverse I ratios are not in common where I pressure is held much longer than the expiratory pressure. So it looks a little unusual, and the patient is allowed to breathe at any time during the inspiratory or the expiratory phase, but is given no additional assistance by the ventilators. The patient's inspiratory and expiratory efforts can occur regardless of what the ventilator is doing. So this mode is often unsynchronized with the patient. This can have consequences. Occasionally, sometimes, you'll need to sedate your patients for them to uh, adapt to this mode of ventilation. Sometimes they become comfortable with it and they'll just breathe as they see fit at any time during the inspiratory or expiratory phase. So let's take a close look at what the waveforms look like and what our patient settings are. So we've got our usual setup of the ventilator here with a passive humidity circuit. I've got my endotracheal tube in line here and I'm measuring both the pressures at the mouth and at the distal end here by the lung itself. So let's see what controls we set up on the mode of airway pressure release ventilation. You'll notice that this looks very unusual. I've got my pressures being held for much longer than my expiratory pressure. So this is be my, my, in this mode it's called T high and T low, all right? Or my IPAP and my EPAP level. The amount of time that that pressure is held dictates the rate on the ventilator. So if I change this and make this shorter, you'll notice that the rate becomes higher. So the combination of the amount of time at, at the high pressure and the low pressure dictate the rate set on the ventilator. I can set the high pressures of the IPAP and the EPAP levels separately from the time. What this does is this allows my patient to spontaneously breathe at any time during the cycle. You can see breathing during the inspiratory phase and now during the expiratory phase. Get a quite a high respiratory rate and creating a lot of pressure variations within the circuit. So this mode is very unusual in that we have pressure control like you've seen in many other modes but often radically applied so that we have these very long inspiratory times and short expiratory times. Now the reason for that is often we get quite high mean airway pressures. And this can be useful for manipulating oxygenation on my patient. So the key elements of airway pressure release ventilation, APRV, are that we set a T high and an IPAP pressure. So we set up an inspiratory pressure and an inspiratory time. We set an expiratory pressure and an expiratory time. Those two times give us our I to E ratio. Often in this mode, we use inverse I ratios, and that inspiration is much longer than exhalation. 
The purpose for that is to give us very high mean airway pressures, which help improve oxygenation. So, we also set our inspiratory pressure and our expiratory pressures, and we get some ventilation when we have exhalation occurring. So we hold up for prolonged inspiration, allow the pressures to release, and then we gain another inspiration. This mode allows the patient to breathe spontaneously at any time during inspiration or exhalation. But often, it's unsynchronized with what the ventilator is doing. So pressure control, IMV in this case, is unsynchronized. That's an important distinction. Airway pressure release ventilation, usually utilized for patients with severe lung disease with severe oxygenation problems. The goal to manipulate mean airway pressure and to have absolute control over the inspiratory pressures and the expiratory pressures. That's the mode of airway pressure release ventilation.